Hey traders, this is Christian from Hertz Traffic at Trade Group, and this is your end of day market video for Thursday, November 11th. So, uh, a little bit of a bounce today in some areas of the market. Uh, the performance, and uh, before I go over the performance, let me just show you the risk disclaimer. So, you have that in front of you. The, everything we're going through is for education purposes only, but you could read the whole risk disclaimer there. And if the video is a little bit fuzzy, it's just because uh, YouTube isn't finished rendering the high definition version of the video. So, yes, performance. You can see I've got um, highlighted or hopefully you can see on your screen uh, the small caps they were the bright spot of the market um, the Nasdaq did keep the queues did finish in the green today but um, you could see this red over here because they, they gave back a lot of those gains from uh, from the open so you know a, a little bit of um, some fading I would say or profit taking you know from a little bit of a bounce so not the best look there in terms of uh, of the performance intraday and, and giving back the uh, the initial bounce o overnight um, the small caps were good but again they they, um, they gave back uh, the performance too they were up over one percent at one point in the session so um, that was the thing that was kind of most concerning to me but um, overall the VIX was down for the day um, the breath was okay you know that kind of um convinced me to kind of try some trades for the day um some of which worked decently some of which didn't work that well just because of the chop that we're in and they just they just didn't have there wasn't just an there there wasn't enough momentum to kind of make a lot of trades work today so sometimes it's just it is what it is uh but you could see the um the advanced declining names for the nasdaq were uh 1700 um, so again, that, that's not bad versus the declining 1155. And then for the S&P, uh, also more advancers than decliners, 287 versus 217. And then um, the Dow, which uh, went in the other direction, 12 advancing versus 18 declining. So those were the, the raw numbers. Let's get into um, the price action for the, for the overall market. And then I've got about, you know, we'll go over quickly about a little more than 10 charts um, in single stocks. But, you know, just to kind of look at what happened here, um, you could see that, you know, it was a very narrow range for the day, but price did try to get reclaim that five period moving average. And if you're a regular viewer of my videos, you know that I talk about the five period moving average being really good for, for your shorter term swing traders, uh, because it just tells you if the market is kind of riding momentum or if it's kind of stalled out a little bit. And right now you've got a declining five day moving average and price was not able to retake that. So we got a little bit of an issue there in the short term, could get straightened out in a day or two. Um, if not, you know, we could see a further kind of push down here. Um, what I, where I really rely on some hints, some clues, some important levels to watch in the short term, because I am in that bucket of doing some, you know, I'm more of a swing trader. And a lot of times I'm doing uh, shorter term swing trades, sometimes a couple days long, sometimes even a little bit of day trading. And then of course I do medium and long term swing trades as well. But, um, you know, I, I definitely want to know what the, what the levels are to watch in the short term. So I've talked about this level the, the last couple of days, 4664, right? We were not able to retake that. We weren't really much able to do much from where we closed yesterday. So basically a lot of chop in the overall S&P for the day. Um, if we look at just glance at NASDAQ and we'll do this backwards, you got the one hour chart, you can see we're, we're a bit deeper into the value area. Um, the 80% rule is still flashing here. So there is an 80% chance that we could go all the way down here, but you know we're kind of running out of time. There's only one more day of the week. We will get a fresh new value area for next week. And I'll talk about levels uh, for that during the um, the weekend and and uh, in the beginning of the week. All right. So I mentioned the Russell um, again was the outperformer, but you could see stalled out. Right. We're looking at the we're looking at one hour bars here, and um, you know as we got to this level, which is basically the bottom of the range yesterday, and we stalled out here. So we're definitely in terms of you know this little volatility that we've been experiencing over the la over the last uh, couple of days we're, we're not out of the woods of that right it doesn't look like the same of what we are experiencing you know towards the beginning of the week and, and and last week so something has changed a little bit in the market it could kind of um you know take its time to kind of 
resume and start to see kind of the wind at our backs again in terms of uh, the price action. But for now, it is what it is. All three of these indices are in the range for this week, right? So basically sideways. If we want to go ahead and look at the daily chart, which again, I, I give more weight behind, right? So you got this nice little green bar, but we didn't overtake anything from yesterday. Okay, so basically it's an inside day from, which basically means that from yesterday, right, which had a decent move down, um, we don't have any confirmation of anything changing since yesterday. That's kind of what the inside bar tells you. If you want to look at the NASDAQ or the Qs too, right, same thing here, right? So, so we have, we did not take, so there's really, um, while I'm going to go through some positive areas of the market, there, there's really nothing to kind of hang your hat on from yesterday to say, hey, this was really, for, for the indices, this, this gave back some, uh, took back some, some levels and, and there's, there's really no significance to today's price action is, is what I'm trying to say. But there were some bright spots. Okay, so that's kind of the negative for the day. But for the, the positive was, like I said, that the VIX um, came down a bit. And um, you can see some of these areas and, you know, there, <laughs> some of these areas had some really good momentum to them today. The solar ETF was up almost 6% for the day, right? I, again, you kind of scratch your head a little bit when you look at some of these, but sometimes, sometimes that's how it works. Uh, sometimes there's some really good strength in some groups uh, underneath the surface of, of, of what the market's doing. And sometimes there's just, um, you know, there's not, but, it, but there were some bright spots today. The Chinese internet groups continued from yesterday too. They were up 5% for the day. Metals and mining, strong. So clean energy, solar, uh, metals and mining, Chinese internet names, steel names were strong today. Right. And um, retail was OK today. Also, you had you had me highlighted further down, didn't make any move during the session um, for the mo for the overall group. But the semis were strong today, too. Right. They were up one point eight percent. So, again, you look at the S&P flat, but there's a lot of areas, you know, maybe there's small weights in the S&P, but they certainly did um, pretty decently. Consumer discretionary you know, a lot of that is Amazon, which was weak today. Uh, Tesla gave back early gains. Uh, from pre-market and um, the internets were not particularly strong today either, right? Um, they were actually um, went down over the session three quarters of a percentage point, so they gave back early gains. Um, aerospace and defense were were, uh, were weak areas as well. So let me go through a couple charts. Um, let's kind of start with, let's see, what what do we want to start with? Let's start with a couple really bright spots of the market, right? Um, these names I don't have a position in, but was definitely interested. This um, app loving. Remember, this had a nice move all the way back here, which kind of brought you out of this consolidation. Um, it jumped over this virgin point of control. It's kind of what you want to see. When you've got a virgin point of control, right, an area of a lot of volume um, where buyers and sellers have previously met up with, but we have not revisited, um, that often acts as resistance, but a leap over is pretty, you know, that's kind of what you want to see when you've got that resistance. All right. And since then, this thing has been on a pretty nice run, um, kind of stalled out here the last week or so, uh, and then gave this, um, you know, tough price action the last couple of days, but very strong. And look at the volume. So I would watch for this to possibly continue higher tomorrow. All right. A couple other ones. Um, I know a lot of people ask me about this one, SoFi. All right, I don't have a position in this one. Um, a lot of people seem to be very bullish on this. Uh, this is pretty easy. I would watch, you know, basically where this thing, the, the high of this thing for the day. All right, remember, try to keep your emotion out of this. Right, there's a lot of people who ask me about the same charts every single day, um, and what they're going to look like. I, I would pay attention to um, for the for the rest of this week. I would pay attention to twenty three twenty five. And then I, I would also watch for a break above today's highs because there, there's a reason why this stalled out where it did today because it, it met the previous resistance on the daily chart. So right around here, okay? So um, if, if you really like this company, that's what you want to see clear um, for a further move higher. Um, let me talk a little bit about the solar names for a minute. Um, the, that's where I spent some of my time today. I traded SEDG. Uh, but ENPH has been the star in this space, right? This had earnings uh, about a week and a half ago and, and gapped up and just kept on going. So it consolidated a little, a little bit. And, you know, we love these types of plays. Uh, but this was, a, this was by far 
um, and has been the, the nicest performer of the group at least that I'm following anyway. The one that I traded today was SEDG. This is another one that I that I like. Also had earnings, didn't have the same exact reaction, but had decent earnings, uh, you know, reaction to it. So again, when we look over to the one hour chart, um, because where I set my alerts is a lot of the times we're looking for a breakout of the consolidation, which is what we got today. Fortunately, it just wasn't, it just didn't have a lot of oomph to it. Um, after that. So kind of stalled out at 363. A little bit disappointing because I had my second target out at 364 and just, just didn't get there. Um, but as long as this thing stays above 356, I will stick in this as a swing trade. All right. Um, so that's that group. Um, next group that was showing all kinds of strength. Um, and this was something that we went over in the pre-market session was that that copper was up today, right? Um, if you if I move back to this copper daily chart, um, you could see that it was kind of do, seemed like it was due for a bounce on the 200-day moving average. So I, I think for some of these names to continue to act very well, you're going to have to see this commodity space uh, continue to go higher, right? So that nice um, green bar on the 200-day moving average right in here, we'll see if we can kind of continue to kind of make a move towards the top of value. Of course, I think that would be good for some of the names like uh, FCX, Free, Freeport, Macbrun. Uh And again, a lot of this stuff is tied to what China does. Um, you know, there's a couple of people that you can follow on Twitter. There's one that's very good, Juan Talks, uh, will give you what's going on in the metal space in China overnight if there's some big movers, right? A couple of weeks ago, we saw all, you know, steel prices were really going down a lot. Months, you know, about a month or two ago, we saw aluminum, zinc, copper going higher, right? That hasn't been the case uh, recently. So it's kind of interesting what's going on with some of these names. Here's the base metals ETF, which has all of those uh, commodities that I just mentioned in them, right? You could see what happened. This thing hit 24 and, and backed off really quickly. So I don't, you know, the one thing that, that I note on this chart is that we're inside value, but below the 50-day moving average. So really, for me to get really bullish again, the commodity space, I would like to see this DBB get back above the 50-day moving average. Again, that's the base metals ETF. Um, if you want to look at overall all commodities, which have been holding up a little bit better, that's DBC, right? Oil, not gas is in this one. And I think gold is in this, uh, this ETF. Again, a little bit different, right? And then, of course, the third one that I look at is DBA, right, which is the agriculture futures. We're going to look at a couple agriculture names, too. All right, so I mentioned I, I wanted to start with that, um, with the copper chart and commodities. But again, they were such a big mover today. Uh, Freeport Macron was up 9%. I, the, the issue here is that you've got this version point of control right in front of this thing. So you, you finally got this move break out of value, but you're going to have some resistance. Um, Alcoa, same thing, big move today. If you caught this, congratulations to you. Up 11%. That's a big move for this stock. Right, but um, it's got to break, you know, 51 and change. Right, you could see we're hitting resistance right there. And then the third one that I really pay attention to in the space is tech resources. Again, a nice bounce, but we don't know if this is going to be the start of a move, or if you just got a really nice one day move. Right, and what you know, one day bounce resistance 29.52. All right, then the steel space. I traded one of these. You know, I added ATKR. Um, this has been a nice name to trade in the space, right? It's going to have um, earnings next week, so I won't be in this for that long. So 11.18 is the earnings, and I want to see a move out of this, right? Nucor saw a little bit of calls today, too. I saw it hit the tape, right? Opening bet on Nucor. Right. I think a little bit of a harder chart, personally. Let's... Um, Let's move over there, right? So again, you know, maybe this kind of this can get back up to the VPOC, take that out, all right? But just wanted to mention that one. So yes, the um, the 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 agriculture space, and then I'll move on to a couple to more tech momentum names. But Bungie um, got out to new highs today. Again, didn't close on the absolute high, but moving in the right direction. Um, CF Industries also is has been acting well. Um, NTR is another one in the space that if it breaks 69, I would be paying attention to. Archer, Daniel, uh, Archer Daniels Midland also watch for a break of 66.20 in this one. Right, that was a name that I played through um, all through here, which worked really well. Have not re-added that one. Um, out of the group, I like the first one that I mentioned, Bungie, the best. 
All right, let's, um, let's go over to a couple of the medical device companies. TMO, right? This is a leader within the group. Notice how well TMO acted yesterday. Thermo Fisher Scientific, you know, was finished positive for the day. No volatility there whatsoever. Strong. Um, and, uh, you know, getting back to getting very close to those highs. Um, this is one that I talk about in almost every one of these videos. Um, I've been doing a lot of trading in this one, taking advantage of dips. INMD was up 4.6%. I would love to see some continuation. Um, bottom line, what you've heard me say is as long as this stays above value, 89.73, I am long this thing and will continue to kind of add on dips. Um, notice what this did yesterday. I, I added right at that red line yesterday. I think I covered that in yesterday's video. Um, but I would like to see this get above 95. That would be great confirmation. So we're kind of hitting a little bit of resistance. And I, I, took, I took a little bit of profits this morning in that swing trade. All right, what, what else? Uh, a couple other ones, like I mentioned, that are a little bit less sector-based. But Live Nation, right? We've seen... Um, a lot of call activity in this name, and we saw more calls in this one. I think this time we saw September calls. Um, I did add this trade. I've been stalking this one since this had this gap up and has been coming in. You know, now it may come in here and fill this earnings gap. That's the only situation with that one. So that's the reason why I just put a starter position on in this one. I do like that the volume is starting to decrease as we go along. But, you know, if we catch a little bit more volatility on the tape, we could lose this five-period moving average and fill the gap. So for me, now it was just a starter, and we'll see if buyers are going to start to come back into this thing um, now that we're decently off the highs. Again, a, a very big reopening type play. Um, a few, Like I said, we'll kind of cover a few other momentum names here, uh, maybe ones that you don't have on your radar, but Perry has been a name that's um, also had a big gap on earnings and has just been consolidating here. No position in this one. I've got a, a, an alert set a little bit north of 90. You're, you hear me say that a lot in these videos, having an alert set, right? That's an important step in the overall process. I can't watch every one of these names, right? I go through almost a different group in, in every video. But what I do is very methodically put alerts, right? That's how I caught the SEDG position today too, I, you know, I had an alert from basically, I think I set an alert there on Sunday, right? And these brokerage systems are great. They allow you to put that alert in there. And then I don't have to look at that name again until it breaks over that pivot point that I was looking for, top of value. All right. Um, AETH is another one, right, that's been quiet. Right? I've got an alert set on this one, too. We'll wait for this one, first of all, to show up on Thinkorswim. If not, we'll move on to the, to the next name. Yeah, this one doesn't look like it wants to come to uh, to come up here. All right, so we'll move on to the next one, um, unless I've got the symbol in wrong. Um, sometimes I do that. AMD had a nice rebound today. The reason why um, we're looking at the one-hour chart, too, is because this came into support yesterday. 137 was your support area, and it kind of rebounded to right around yesterday's high. But you look at this daily chart, it's holding that momentum, right? We talked about the five period moving average already in this video and how useful it can be. Notice that we, we held that today, right? And bounced pretty nicely. NVIDIA, I actually tried to day trade in this. Um, it just, we did, just didn't have any momentum for the day, but it did finish up 3% and that's also holding short-term momentum and, and, and acting pretty well. MR, MRVL was one that I did add today. That one closed on the highs of the session. So again, trends in intact with this one. Again, I like to sometimes look at these ones that don't have as many eyeballs on, right? Everybody talks about NVIDIA and AMD. So they're a little bit overplayed, but I like to look at you know one of these. Um, Applied Materials was one that I unwound yesterday, but um, still acted very well. I'm no longer in that one. Um, and then finally, Unity Software did not close on the highs, still finished up 3.2%. 3, 3 um, Roblox was one that I tried today too. Just really, it looked like there was a seller in this thing right around 100. Um, for now, I'm in it and we'll stay in it as long as it's kind of holding um, this level. But I like the fact that this thing is off its highs and maybe we can start to see this thing build uh, a little bit. Um, last group I'll just talk about is the is the Chinese internet group. Um, Baba, right? Um, if you're interested in Alibaba, I would watch for a break 
above 170. Right? I still think it looks pretty good on the daily chart, but very easy. Right? Set that alert, and if it can get to if it can get over 170, then I think you've got another six bucks um, to this uh, seven dollars to this VPOC up here at 177, which I think ultimately is where this could get to in the short term. All right, guys, that's it. So, like I said, you know, bottom line is um, we didn't really get too much out of out of the um, out of the indices to to uh, hang your hat on, but um, you know, overall, if if you look under the hood, there there was some decent momentum plays, uh, you know, that acted very well and and a lot of stalling out towards the end of the day. So that's just one day. Uh, we'll we'll go back at it tomorrow. Um, here is the trade blotter, just so you could see, which I do show in every one of these videos. So, so that you can see what, what I traded for the day. All right, I mentioned the INMD. I mentioned pretty much all of this. There's a couple other day trades I tried in here. DQ, which didn't work, which is a China solar name, but gave it a shot. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.